Welcome to Dorky Now. My name is Sonia Mansfield. Could you fetch my diet pills, hon? Joining me is my podcasting sister from another mister and the co-host of Dorky Now, Margot D. Hello, friend. Hello, friend. It's the times. They're a-changing. Something's blowing in the wind. Who said fetch that? Me <laughs> fetch me my diet pills, would you, dear? <laughs> it is Margot's birthday week, so we're doing one of Margot's favorite movies for this episode, and we're talking about 1988's Hairspray. What a delight. Ugh. It's, I was saying to you just before we got out of the air, I'm like, this movie is better than most movies I see. Yes. It's like still, all these years later, it just completely holds up. It's just, it is a goddamn delight. This movie <laughs> is just a delight. It goes right to the pleasure center in my brain yes. and just hangs out. You have seen this movie many, many times. I haven't Countless. seen it. I haven't seen it as many times as you. So I'm going to, I I want to ask you like a million questions. But if you haven't seen Hairspray, I, what are you doing? Go watch 1988's Hairspray. It's written and directed by John Waters. And this is easily like his most accessible movie. Like it's like super mainstream for everybody. <laughs> It's, it's linear. Yeah. It's, 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 <laughs> and it's PG-13. So you could watch it with your family. Yeah. Nobody's and- eating dog poop. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so good. It, I, I, There's a, a lot of people in it. I won't list everyone, but Ricky Lake. Was this her first movie, by the way? This is her first movie. And she's unbelievable she's so good in this so good divine deborah harry's in there sonny bono jerry stiller uh you got josh charles in there in like a really small role and he's he's just so cute and he's so isn't he he's he's still so cute john waters has a cameo ruth brown uh mink stole i love their names (laughs) oh good but let's start like we always do did you see this in the theater Yes, I did. I did see it in the theater. I heard an interview with uh, John Waters, and I don't remember where I heard it, but he was talking about this movie, and I just found him so delightful, and I'd never seen his movies before, so I didn't know about the dog poop or anything else. <laughs> like, this is my first John Waters movie, and I thought these were his movies. Then I went back and saw his original polyester at all, and I was like, oh, okay. He's a big weirdo. <laughs> He's such a weirdo. He is a he's an an awesome, delightful weirdo. And yes, I also saw this in the theater and it was my first John Waters. I when I sat down to watch this, I thought maybe Crybaby was my first. But then I remembered, no, it was definitely Hairspray. Then Crybaby, because I think Crybaby was 90. So, yes. And Crybaby. I didn't think Crybaby was very good. But no. I also saw it on Broadway. He actually, because he did so well with Hairspray, yeah, that they were going back to the mine, and they're like, well, let's try, because that's the second most accessible one. Yes. But I feel like that one's just stunt casting. And, yeah. And not much of a plot or... Yeah, I just, I remember wanting it to be more like Hairspray, and... yeah. And that's okay. Like, I'm sure Crybaby has its fans, and... It just, it wasn't for me. I actually wonder if I would like it more now than I did then. But I did love Serial Mom. And what year did Serial Mom come out? Serial Mom is great. Serial Mom. 94. So I really like that one. So if you haven't seen Serial Mom with Kathleen Turner, that's really funny. And I just remember her punching out Patty Hearst in one scene. (laughs) Because she was wearing white shoes after Labor Day. (laughs) Such a good movie, but we're not talking about Serial Mom. We're talking about Hairspray. Um, should we just go through the plot? Yes. All right. I'll, do you want to take the lead? It's your uh, birthday. It's my birthday, so I have to take the lead. Okay. So it's 1961. We're in Balt 62. Sorry. We're in Baltimore, Maryland. That's where John Waters is from, and he's like a king in Baltimore. Everyone loves him there. Yeah. Have you and, been? Have you been to Baltimore? Oh, yeah. Me too. I've been nowhere, and I've been to Baltimore. I love Baltimore. Yeah. I think it's rad. <laughs> it is rad. I it, the crabs are great. The people are cool. I mean, it's beautiful by the water. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So 
Tracy Turnblad, uh, she is the daughter of Divine <laughs> and Cherry uh, Stiller. Sorry, Stiller. Thank you. Yeah. I, I have to say, the cast in this movie is so, they are so excellent. They I mean, are. They're, they're so they're, good. They're very funny and they're really good actors. I mean, I and there's Penny Pingleton is her best friend who was vitamin C. She's this pop singer later on. She'd become a pop singer. Oh my but- God. I did not. I, I did either. not put this together at all. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. So she's, they're, they're best friends. And the thing with Tracy is that she's a chubby girl and she's like, really, she watches the corny Collins. Did you ever watch a dance show after school? Um, no, I used to watch soul train and American bandstand on the weekends, but I think we had one here and it was like TV twenties, dance party oh tv 20 god that's a crazy oh, wait, station oh wait and there was one on usa but that wasn't like a local one that was a national one no we had so i was living in pennsylvania we had one that was based in philly that i think the um kelly from live with kelly and ryan yeah i think she used to dance on it <laughs> This is a long time ago, but there were a lot of towns had their own. My mom would tell me this, like every, mm-hmm. like all across, the, like towns had their own local dance show. And so they would play music and the, you would dance in your living room. And it was sometimes the only times you would hear certain songs because yes. they wouldn't be played on the radio. And they, and I was asking my mom about this because, yeah, they were segregated. I mean, there was, there was the black show and the white show. And so this, the whole point of this is that Tracy auditions to be a part of the show, And as soon as she gets there, she realizes that it's segregated. They have the third Thursday of every month is Black Day. Yeah, it's a Negro Day, they call it. Negro Day. Yeah. Right. And so we have Mama Maybell. Is that her name? Uh, Yeah. It's who she's the uh, African-American woman that sort of leads everybody. Tracy falls in love with a guy who is dating Amber, who's this blonde, perfect, stuck up bitch and she's the queen of the whole thing and everyone's terrified of her and she's perfect and deborah harry and sunny bono are her parents like i'm oh my god deborah harry is so that hair her her hair is like the biggest hair ever and she's just (laughs) she's so funny they i mean they both are everybody is on point like everyone is game in this movie they're so she's so good it's like, because like, it was like the thing with like Crybaby for me, it felt like stunt casting. Yes. Like people are kind of, you could really see the acting in some of the people who aren't actors. And Debbie Harry and Sonny Bono are hilarious. Well, Sonny Bono did comedy for a long time. Yes. But she's dating a guy that looks just like Elvis, Michael St. Gerard, who, by the way, played Elvis in like three different <gasps> movies. I didn't know and that. a TV show. Yes. I did yes. not know this. Great Balls of Fire. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. There's another Elvis one. I don't think it's Forrest Gump, but he did. There was a TV series called Young Elvis. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I was into Michael St. Gerard for a while. He's really he's really cute. He's so gorgeous. Well, do you know what happened to him? No. He dropped out of show business and he became a pastor and he became a pastor in Harlem. Oh. Here in New York. I did not That's, know this. But he, he played Elvis like three or four. If you look at his credits, he played Elvis like three or four times. He's real cute. Oh, he's, oh, he's beautiful. He and Tracy hook up. Yes. And they become a couple right away because Tracy's fun and Amber's an asshole. Yes. And and there's an auto show. And the the girl that gets the most votes, votes gets to be the queen of the auto show. So we have that competition. Mm-hmm. And then there's this whole thing where Penny falls in love with a guy named Seaweed. Yes. Who is gorgeous and he's black yeah so their relationship is interracial and so they go to like the dirty part of baltimore at the dirty record store where all the kids are listening to really dirty music and (laughs) dirty dancing like real like the movie dirty dancing like but better (laughs) but better (laughs) but better and it's so it's there's all these things going on i mean it's about segregation but it's of course told from a white point of view yes but that's you can't help that like that's the director that's the times and stuff like that yeah and he based it on a lot of stuff that he grew up with so it's it is coming from from his His perspective sure his perspective uh the soundtrack 
is fantastic. The dancing is really, really good. The parents are, uh, Tracy's parents, like at first they're against it and then they want her to be a campus leader. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They're totally supportive of her. She gets the dress, the hefty hideaways. She gets a dress, you know, sponsorship. I mean, there's all this stuff going on and it's, it's just my favorite. I think my favorite thing in the world, and I'll post it on my Instagram and on TikTok, but it's where the gym teacher's like, let's play some dodgeball. <laughs> <laughs> I laugh so hard every single <laughs> This stuff is about being a teenager, yes. like really gets a lot of stuff well. Like, go to second, go to second. <laughs> yeah, go to, oh God, yes. Like, it's so <laughs> ridiculous. I love it. And here's where I'm just going to, it's going to turn We're the Farley gush. show, right? And it's just like, I love, I love, I love. I love that. Tracy at meets hooks up with Link like almost instantly like yeah they're they're, into and it. they're together and there's never any like and now he doesn't like her anymore or something stupid broke them up like that's not what the movie's about like no. and Amber the mean girl is a real bitch and she is the only one that's like Tracy's fat and she's white trash and she's this and she's that she's the only she's one she's adopted she's adopted <laughs> like she's the only one like everyone else is like you're out of line you're being an asshole like everyone else really likes Tracy cuz she's fun she's really fun and even as she gets more popular i just think lesser movies could have taken a different path where like Tracy becomes bitchy because she becomes famous and and then she has to learn a lesson. Yes. Like, and there's that's not what's going on here. No, she's teaching everyone else a lesson and uses her fame and popularity for something really good. Tracy is a good person from beginning to end. And it's one of the things I really, really like about this movie is it's not about it's not about her relationship with Link. It's not about getting a boy to like her. And it's not about trying to win over these other people and make them like her. She likes herself. Right. And, and she's confident yeah. and, and she has good morals and she has good character and she sticks with it and she gives people a break. But she also stands by her principles. Yes. And, and she's just a, like you said, she's like a genuinely good person. But there's also it's just I mean. It's so God, this movie is just so funny. There's just so much that's going on here. Like Tracy has this big she rats out her hair, mm-hmm. so she's a hair hopper. <laughs> and they call her a hair hopper because she just the whole thing of the movie is having this big teased hair. Yes. And I would ask my mom, like, what was that like? And she goes, Oh my God. She'd sleep with rollers in her hair, or she'd sleep sitting up, and then you had oh a my wrap. God. Uh, yeah, silk around it. Like mom's because mom hair is really kinky, so she had to wear her hair in silk, and it was just all this stuff just to make it big and and luscious and yes. huge. And I love it. The wood kid can't see. He can't see around, <laughs> can't her, see hair. around her hair. She was like, "Can't help me, short." <laughs> <laughs> but then she gets sent set to special ed. It's so ridiculous. Yes, like it and, is, and it's all just kids that they're just trying to hold back academically like i think there are like some special needs people in the class but in general it's basically like we put all the african-american students in special ed it's right and that's where she meets all these other people and they become friends like really fast because she's fucking rad who wouldn't want to be friends with tracy tracy's great she doesn't let anything stop her yeah she's yeah, I mean, like, it's also the trope is that, you know, a girl that that's chubbier, that she should just be self full of self-loathing and hate yes. herself and not want to do things, especially not dance. Right. You know, and, hit, you know, and she's doing the pony and all this stuff like she's bouncing around and she doesn't give a shit. She's Mm-mm. having fun. No. And that's like makes you have fun. No, she's just so rad. And I love I love Penny, her best friend. Oh, Penny Pingleton. Yes, yeah, she's so she's so cute. Her mom is really like such a freak like (laughs) she's so paranoid she's so racist you know she goes to like the black part of town and like she thinks every black person there is gonna like mug her and rape her and she's just so ridiculous but at one point she she comes and she gets penny and she's like i'm gonna put a red p on your shirt so everyone knows you're punished and i'm like her name is penny 
Like, <laughs> she, so you see her walking around in this shirt with a giant red P on it. And I'm like, it just looks like she has a monogrammed shirt on. I'm like, her mom is so such a racist dummy. <laughs> and like, she hires a, like, psychiatrist that's played by John Waters to, like, <laughs> to brainwash her into dating white boys. <laughs> And he's got like this spinner and he's trying to like <laughs> hypnotize her. And he's like, you want to date white boy? <laughs> like, it's so stupid. Like in the funniest way. And it's like, it never works. It's, it's played like really broad for laughs. It's just so funny. He's just like, you will date white boy. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love when that we're gushing. You were gushing at the, at the dance. There's one of the dances they go to is with Mother Mama Maybell, and so she's radicalizing the kids. Like this, the segregation is bullshit. We should all be on the you know the dance shows together. It shouldn't be a big deal. And the kids go to dance, and the I, I once again this sound. I own this soundtrack. I own this movie on VHS and DVD. <laughs> I have a digital copy. I had it on cassette, then CD. The soundtrack i know all these songs really really well i love it when they're in baltimore and they're making out and there's like a rat on her foot and she just takes it away <laughs> yeah nothing <laughs> will they, stop me <laughs> they're, they're just going for it i'd want to kiss them too i don't care about a rat in that case mm -hmm. i mean who cares but they uh, they need to hide because penny's mom is chasing them through baltimore and tracy's parents are looking for her and so they go into this this beatnik house and it's pia zadora <laughs> yes. and rick O'Case's r.i.p yeah pia zadora is fucking hilarious she is them. she's so she's funny great and I love Rick Ocasek, like, doing his painting, and he, like, smashes it over his own head, and, like, let's get, let's get high, and they're like, we'll get addicted! Like, they're actually, like, really good kids. They're like, like, they would never do drugs. They're like, don't even breathe it in! Like, because <laughs> they're so good. They're such nice little kids. They just want to dance. They do. So Tracy wants to now she wants to like they seaweed brings his sister to it. it's such a cute scene where the little kids have a dance day yes and the little ones are dancing and so he's bringing his little sister inez is it inez his little yeah. sister and she of course they say no because mm -hmm. she's black you know it's colored day it's negro day the third thursday of every month and that's uh. when they have on site they have a protest yes and they tracy gets picked up and sent to reform school <laughs> and they 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 straighten out her hair. And she straightens it out because yeah. now she saw it. Like she realizes, and, and I love it when she sees her boyfriend on the TV screen, <laughs> and the news starts licking the. Screen. She's like <laughs> trying to French kiss the TV. She's like, <laughs> I love so much of this movie. There's just so much, to leave. but she's immediately like she's fighting for what's right. And then I love this turnaround. Like her parents are like, you know what? Right. That's that's a good thing. Yeah. We join we join the NAACP <laughs> and her dad sells joke stuff yes, at his he, shop. He has a joke shop. Yes. It's a joke shop. So he has like a little a lapel flower pin, but it spits out water. Yes. He just says segregation is no joke. But they mean it. <laughs> like they're really <laughs> And Divine is so so believable. So believable. It's just so funny and awesome and like i love how supportive she is i love that she here we go gushing like i love when they go out and they go shopping together and she convinces her mom to like get her hair done and like welcome to the 60s mom because Mama. now she's it's just she's just so good in it and it's so sad that you know finally like this this movie like really clicked with mainstream audiences it made money and mm -hmm. this is when a lot of people first discovered Divine and, you know, R.I.P. She passed away like what, like a week after it came out or something. Yeah. And she didn't really get to enjoy that success. And that is super sad. Yeah. Only 40 years old, too. I know. And they were best friends with That's the so, director. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Really sad. Total buzzkill. I brought everybody yeah. down. But, it's, no, but, but she's but so they, good in it. She well, she's so great that it, nowadays when the part of the f mother is played, they always have a man mm -hmm. dressed up as her, as like kind of in honor of Divine, which is great. Which is part of what's yeah. what's 
but they're but the parents are really supportive the kids they they go to the the corny they go to the oh god damn it it's like the 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 theme park right thank you yeah i'm like i forget what it's called though it's like acres park or you know something like that right and Sonny Bono plays this racist prick who's just like, I don't want to let any black people here. And so, of course, there's people picketing and they're, this is where they're going to do the auto show. And Tracy, like Tracy wins the competition. Yes. And she had and Amber is just like such an asshole. Like she's like, no, no, no. And she's like hiding in her, you know, <sighs> in her chair. She never learns a lesson, which is also great because, like, she wouldn't learn a lesson. No, she wouldn't. Jerk. Oh my god. Okay, the scene where she and Debbie Harry are dressed exactly alike, and there's a (laughs) band that's singing for the kids, and she's totally like flirting with the lead singer, and then she's just totally tonguing him next to her. It's so ridiculous. It's so silly. The uh, 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 divine. Uh, as Edna and Tracy are wearing this dress that's like got all these flowers on top and like a kind of like a blue skirt underneath or so I'm like I would wear that I would wear that yeah. right oh, now yeah, that's totally that's your outfit yeah I'm dressed like, me I'm Piedz- Piedz- <laughs> We're, me and the beatniks I'm dressing like them I'm like I have I would wear pretty much everything Tracy wears in this movie actually I'm like very similar similar style I think I just I love her so much. She's so 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 she, great. She's so good. I love the Madison when they do the Madison and she just like she goes front and center and mm-hmm. just joins in and does it. I mean just Tracy is such a hero. She's so Yes, that's a great she, way to put it. She is such a hero. She's such a hero and I kind of wish like I was younger and I had like a role model like this too. Yes. Because she just doesn't care what people think of her. She's no. just, and she's, she, like I said, she gives people a break. She's really kind. You know, she's fun. Mm-hmm. She's, she's super fun. She doesn't judge people. But if you're an asshole, she'll call you out. Yeah. And she instantly clicks with, with people on the show and with the audience of the, like the viewers watching the show love her because she's fun and they can relate to her because she's a fun, good person. Yeah. You know, and I I um I want to talk about her hair because I know that like in the hair, the whole thing is hairspray, right? And everyone's hair is like super, super big. But it was also super big in the eighties to have really big hair. And I'm wondering yeah. how how big was your hair, Margot, in the eighties? I didn't tease it very much, but I will say some products were used to kind of and yeah. I did have a diffuser. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did have some product to kind of keep it. It was, it was, uh, I, I was thinking about this movie today cause we need to cover it. Rockstar, like the oh, way yeah, yeah. the lead in Rockstar looks, um, what's his face? Not Marky Mark. Oh, Simon. No, no. Dominic no. West. Dominic West. Dominic West yes. and Rockstar. I had that hair. <laughs> <laughs> wish we have to talk about one I mean, day. I'm like I'm opening up our list right now and I will put Rockstar on the list I know my <laughs> by the way my sister loves Rockstar she legit like loves it and loves the song where it's like stand up and shout or whatever <laughs> like she loves it <laughs> I'm like See, I love to make fun of it <laughs> yeah I'm like I'll put it down right now maybe we could yeah. do that one next that yeah, would be fun. I think that'd be hilarious. But that, yeah, I did. Did you have big hair? Oh, yeah. I had like, um, I was blonde in the 80s and I had really bit, like you would use sun in to make it like extra blonde. And crunchy. Yeah. And it was crunchy, uh, really big bangs, like really big, like, you know, Jessica Simpson wore her hair, like, like really big and curly and like full. Yeah. Like I did it like that, but in the 80s and like a lot of like aquanet and stuff i had so very, much very hairspray big. yes and I, I hairspray and also like because we used to wear tights like in hose mm-hmm. before bear leg got got in, got into the mix um so if you ever had a run in your stockings you could use hairspray to stop it so hairspray yes. had many many uses this is that's right oh my god or you could use nail polish nail polish was the most popular yes yeah 
I want to say I would also wear Tracy's uh, roach dress that she's wearing at the end yeah. of the movie. I'm like, I would wear that right now. Yeah. All of it. All of it. Did you see the um, the 2007 movie? Of course. I didn't see the musical um, on Broadway when it came out because I was too fucking broke. And I mm. wish I had because everyone told me that it was fantastic. And I think the music is so I mean it just lends itself to a musical yeah. so easily like this is just it's a no-brainer and I think it it does it very well John Travolta's a little mm, okay you know I prefer Harvey Firestein but you know yeah. that's nitpicking yeah I, I I haven't seen the the 2007 one but I know like the big difference is well this this one the 88 one is it's just a movie with music and the 2007 is a full-on like musical Right. So, but are the, and the songs are all, are they all original songs? I think they're all original okay. in the, in the musical. All right. They're good. There's a song called, I think it's just Hello Baltimore, or Wake Up Baltimore is the first one. <laughs> and it's really catchy. I mean, it's got great people working on it, but it's like Baltimore is like a big, it's also a character in this movie, the yeah. buildings and everything. Like it just takes place in a very certain place at a very certain time. And all of the hair, all of the costumes, all of the makeup are just spot on perfect. It really adds to it. Yeah. Are there any like story differences in the in the more in the 2007 one? I don't. Or is it just or is it pretty much the same? It's pretty much the okay. same. Yeah. Because I will. I'm probably going to watch that this week because now I just I'm super curious and I just got to know. Yeah. But, what I'm wor- I'm like, oh, I hope they don't like make Tracy an asshole. Basically, is what I'm no, worried about. No, okay, Tracy's okay, never good. an asshole. Okay, Phew. that's the best part of the movie is Tracy. Yes, and I, I just she, rented she... it, and now I'm like, I should have bought it. I should have bought, bought it. it. I bought it last night. I'm like, yeah, I own it in different forms, but I. It's one of the ones, one of the movies I brought with me to New York when I moved to New York. Mm-hmm. It was one of those, but I would lend it out to friends all the time they because it it did fine at the box office but it wasn't like a huge hit i don't it's kind of a cult classic now it made yeah i mean it was made for 2.7 million dollars and it made 8.3 million dollars this was a a video hit i think yes i think so too and it has its fans and i one of them is our friend erica erica bromley from f this movie her family's been dealing with a lot of the covid stuff yeah. or else she would totally be here absolutely so like i hope i hope the bromleys are getting well soon that they they all got it they all got hit at once it's ugh. Ugh. get well soon but, bromleys but she she got and i were talking what's about it about this movie it's just like it's just one of those it's a salve for my soul mm-hmm. i put this on and i'm not worried about i don't look at my phone i'm not looking at anything else it just puts me in a world and it makes me happy yeah it's, and that's and it's more it's better than most movies I see. Yeah, it's just like I said at the top. I'm like it is a goddamn delight. Like it's just it really is. It's just joy. It's just such a joyful movie, and I don't know, it, with a really good message and and great like, message. And I I love what you call out about how the mean girl doesn't learn a lesson because uh, honestly, a person like this probably would not. Learn a no, lesson. that's where we have Karens to this day. Yeah. yeah. And she, there's this whole thing about like Tracy wins the like auto show pageant, but is disqualified because she's in reform school. So <laughs> Amber is like super willing to just be like, yeah, that means I win. And like wears, puts on the crown and sits in the chair and everyone's like, we fucking hate you. And she's no, like, no, I'm the winner. And like, like a spoiled brat, just like holding on to that chair and like unwilling to like admit that she is not the winner. And I'm like, she's a Karen. That's a really good way of putting it. She's yeah. such a Karen. But then of course, Amber or er, Tracy is pardoned by the governor <laughs> from reform school. <laughs> totally Sorry. a thing. And that makes her, uh, she's the winner. So she actually legit wins and shows up in her amazing uh, cockroach dress. <laughs> this movie makes me laugh. It makes me care about people. It, it just make it puts heart emojis over my eyes. Yes. Like if you were to see me, more than like, I, I know you can't 
licorice pizza. Like, I don't care about anybody in that movie, really. I like some stuff in there, yeah. but I will never see it again, or it's not going to be something I seek out. Whereas with, with hairspray, I seek it out. Yes. And it just always, it's always welcome. It always puts me in a good mood. It's a, it's fantastic music once again. It's great dancing. They look like real teenagers. Yes. And the it's funny as shit. It's really funny. Yeah, I wish I wish this movie had come out just a few years earlier for teenage, like because I would have been yes. seventeen when I saw it, which is great. Like, yeah. it's a great movie for a seventeen year old to see. But I would have loved fourteen year old Sonia to see this movie. Like, this would have yeah totally worked. And a movie I saw maybe in the last two years. That I was also like, oh, this would have been such a good movie for Teenage Sonia was Booksmart. It, I was just going to say, yeah, it reminds me of that. Booksmart is also like the teenagers in it are just really smart. And it's not about like popular people and nerds and things like that. But it's um, it's inclusive and funny. I just I, book smart is really really great a friend of mine Malika recommended it to me because I hadn't seen it yet and she's like they made a movie for you and you haven't seen it and it's called book smart what's wrong with you and when I watched it I was like oh my god this movie is a delight yeah it's, it's funny as fuck and so is this one hairspray yep. really it's got everything hour and a half not a wasted scene mm -mm. it just moves at a great pace I mean yes there's goofy casting but it works yes I think it's just the and you have you have people really good act like Josh Charles is a great actor and he is and such I, a small Rick, it, like his first movie like real small uh, part but he's such a cutie such he a cutie. little baby Char Josh Charles he's so cute and Ricky I mean she just holds it all together I just. I th and it's so funny. I read it somewhere that she didn't have a trailer. It's her first movie. She had to get tra changed, like in the bathroom wherever they went, or and Divine had his own. Trailer. <laughs> well, he probably brought it from home. It's like his own trailer. Yeah. He's like, "It's mine. It's my trailer. <laughs> I've earned this. Get out of here." I earned it exactly. <laughs> you know, Pip Squeak. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you remember where her talk show? I totally remember her talk show. It was go Ricky, go Ricky. go Ricky. I worked on the Queen Latifah show and we taped in the same building as Ricky Lake and people would sneak cigarette breaks, wink, wink, mm -hmm. but up on the roof of the building yes. and we would run up there and you could hear, go Ricky, go Ricky, <laughs> like in the background. It's I think crazy. a lot of people only think of her as from yeah. that talk show. And I'm like, she did this first and she's, she's so great. She's a great actress. She's really, really good. And this so likable, so charming, funny, great dancer. I just it's all so believable, like the best looking guy in the Corny Collins group. Mm -hmm. Of course, he would he would like her. She's fun. Amber's a pain in the ass. Amber's yeah. like, I have a blemish. <laughs> the scene with Debbie Harry. Oh, where she like where she like <laughs> pops her pimple. It's like so gross. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like all right practice faster like she's doing cha-cha dancing it's so oh. good that's oh, so great all the dancing just... is so fun too and like i we don't well i mean i guess we have like dances like that now too it's just they're different and i'm old and i can't do them <laughs> it requires a lot of energy to do like the pony Yes. That's not for or the mashed potato. That's not for people with like bad ankles and <laughs> like it's not freaky for backs. It's not for us. <laughs> no, no. With our with our our old bones. <laughs> yeah. I, I I would love to do the mashed potato, but my ankle would say no. Oh, I know Thank exactly. You. Do you want to hear about the other movies that came out in February '88? Yes, I do. Okay. There was She's Having a Baby. Oh, James, she's having a baby. <laughs> Remember that song? Yes. They winkling. I am. It's uh, Ke uh, Kevin Bacon. Is yep. this movie. Yeah, no, okay. Dave Wakeland did the, the song. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the Unbearable Lightness of Being. That's a sexy movie. Sexy. I did not see that one in the theater, for sure. Mm. Action Jackson. 
<laughs> That's one we have to cover with Adam Risky one day. <laughs> that was in F This Movie's uh, F This Movie Fest last year. And I hadn't seen it since the theater and that movie's bananas. It's it's insane. But, you know, I'll say that Carl Weathers is really, really good in it. And I can't believe they didn't make more Action Jackson movies because <laughs> they're pretty fun. Like, he, he's he was really good in it. I'll say that. School Days. Not my favorite, Spike Lee. Yeah. Good, there's it's some good bummer. stuff. Yeah, there's some good stuff in it. But overall, the movie's kind of a bummer. Also yeah. a musical. If you yeah. remember that. It's yeah. so yeah. weird. Because this was like... Well, She's Gotta Have It came out, and this was like his studio movie. This was before Do the Right Thing. So this was like his like sophomore movie, and everyone's like, what the what? When it came yeah. out, it was a bizarre movie. I'll just say that. Um, Shoot to Kill. Have you seen Is Shoot that... to Kill? Who's in that? Tom Berenger and Sidney Poitier. And Kirstie Alley, that's a yeah, good movie. Yeah, it's a really, it was. this is a good movie, and I saw this one in the theater and really liked it. Same. Bloodsport. <laughs> I don't, <yeah. laughs> sorry. My brothers like that. <laughs> totally. This, I was like, the, this one wasn't for me at the time. I actually might like it more now because I like stuff like that, but uh, Frantic. Is that uh, oh, Roman Polanski? Yes. Yeah, but I did see Ford. it. I saw it in the theater too, and I remember liking it. Yeah, he married Roman Pulaski. Married the actress. Oh yeah, what? Who was it? It was like um, Amelia. I forget. It doesn't matter. She, yeah. Fuck Roman she, Pulaski. She married. <laughs> she married a rapist. Yeah, least. exactly. What was funny was I saw Frantic in the theater, and then I reviewed it for the school paper. And now I look back on that, and I'm like, why the fuck? would i review frantic for the school paper it is like uh, okay not for teenagers no it's a it's an adult thriller yes and i'm for like sure. i will totally but, review frantic <laughs> but it's harrison ford it's in paris that's what i remember about yeah it. yeah it's so ridiculous i'm like oh teenage sonia so ridiculous bless her heart bless her heart thought teenagers wanted to hear about frantic (laughs) i don't want to hear about it now what a nerd (laughs) and then the light the last one was a night in the life of jimmy reardon oh that's uh uh river phoenix yes yeah he's stripping all the women yeah it's not a good movie but he's so cute in it that's a lot of his movies at this time. I know. I'm like, every movie. <laughs> Oof. I'm like, so cute, so talented, so handsome. Not a good movie. All right. Are you ready to hear the top 10 for the week? This came out in February 1988. Yes. Top 10 songs. I love this song. Oh, my God. Top uh, Number 10, Belinda Carlisle, I Get Weak. I, Belinda Such Carlisle a- is what inspired me to first dye my hair red i was i loved her hair so much in this like heaven is a place on earth i get weak I, I know someone who, who's friends with her she worked on her book <gasps> and got to go to her place in the south of france hung out oh my god so well, she's great oh good phew okay yeah. good i don't know this one paul carrick don't shed a tear I don't... it's not ringing a bell for me Mm-mm, weird i feel like i know every song from the 80s I know. I thought like 88, I would know every single thing. Here we go. Rick Astley, never going to give you up. Never going to give you up. I love, <laughs> still love it. Still love Rick Astley. I really do. See if you can guess which movie was popular at this time. Patrick Swayze. She's like the wind. Oh my God. We, I know you, we need to do Dirty Dancing someday. Yeah, it's on the list. Yeah. We are going to do, yeah. It, that movie was so popular. We let Patrick Swayze make a song and made it a hit. <laughs> It was a huge hit. Foreigner, Say You Will. I'm like, I know. I vaguely remember that song. You'll know this one. Eric Carmen, Hungry Eyes. Yeah, I do. Hungry Eyes. <laughs> another another dirty. You're right. This is going to be all dirty dancing. Okay. <laughs> George Michael, Careless Whispers. I love this song. I, yeah. So good. I use that on TikTok for a <laughs> montage of my cat Sarah because she's so cute. I love I love eighty songs with sax solos. Oh. That's a that's a whole that's a whole jam right there. It's a whole vibe. And saxophones went together like peanut butter and jelly, y'all. True. 
couldn't avoid it. Tiffany could have been. I love Tiffany. That's another one with red hair. And I was like, red. I should yeah. have red hair. Um, oh, Pet Shop Boys and Dusty Springfield. What have <gasps> I done? What have I done? What have I done to deserve this? I love that song. I loved it. So I loved really? the Pet Shop Boys. I was Me in. Me too. And number one for this week, I love this song, Expose, Seasons Change. <laughs> seasons change. change. I loved Expose. <laughs> Let me be the one. one. I, oh, yeah. They were so good. They were dope. So they had really big hair, too. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what else are you dorking out about? I'm really into HBO Max this week. Yeah. I want to give you the shout out because you turned me on to it but Brene Brown has has yeah. a show on HBO Max and it's like six episodes mm-hmm. seven it's I watched them all like in oh, one full swoop I'm only I'm I've only seen the first two because uh Calvin's like I don't want to watch Brene Brown so <laughs> <laughs> your 10 year old boy isn't he's, into this. He's not, he should watch it he really should but he, yeah he's not into it so we did I only got to watch the first two but I am listening to one of her books right now and if she's Brene Brown is the fucking coolest. She just she is. And her whole thing is about like vulnerability and how it takes courage to be vulnerable. And yep, her I, I, on HBO, it's called Atlas of the Heart. Yes. Right. Yeah. And it, she's talking about different emotions and she's also using movie clips to kind of show what those emotions look like. It's really well done. Did you see the one with Booksmart? No. I thought that's why you brought it up. No. Oh, my God. There is a scene where there's an episode where she uses a clip from Booksmart. And it's one of my favorite scenes. These Booksmart is about these two girls that give up all pleasure in high school in order to get into really good colleges. So they yes. never party. They never got detention. They were goody goodies. And then they get one day on the last day of school. When at, they're hanging out the lockers and they find out that all of their friends got into really good colleges and they were all fucking party animals. <laughs> and she's so mad. Yeah, she's, she's like, like, I are you kidding me? Gave up everything. And like, <laughs> so funny. So that's that's something I'm into. Uh, Julia Child, have you seen that one I yet? didn't start it yet. It's pretty good. There's like three episodes up there. I'm sorry, I'm blanking on the name of the woman who plays Julia Child. God damn it. Here, I'll look David it Hyde Pierce plays her husband. Oh. And it's all about, oh, uh, uh, B.B. Newworth is in this show. And it's like 30 minutes a piece. And it's just sectioned on when she began her eponymous talk show, the Julia Child mm-hmm. PBS show that was out of Boston and then went nationwide. So it's her just starting her career. And it's really, it's really good. I will definitely watch it. I I did watch the documentary about Julia Child. Yeah. That came out a couple months ago and it was really good. Sarah Lancashire. Yes, she's British. Yeah. And then there's a comedy special, Jared Carmichael. He was on Saturday Night Live last night. And he's playing at, he's doing a gig at the Blue Note, which is a jazz club in New York. And he comes out as gay and he happens to be African-American. Okay. So he's talking about what it is for him, you know, to come out. And he was from North Carolina, like a very Christian family. And it's really funny. And it was really interesting. And I super liked it. Okay. Is that on Netflix or that's on HBO too? All that's on HBO. Wow. Right? HBO Max is killing it. They're finally, yes. Now that they got the damn app to work on my Hulu, <laughs> on my Roku, so, excuse me. Such bullshit. Ugh, it made me so mad. You are so but frustrated. it works now. Good. Those are, those are awesome, awesome picks. I don't think I talked about this last week. Um, I watched all of Life and Beth, the Amy Schumer oh, I, show. No, we didn't. So tell me what you think of it. I, I loved it. I loved it. I think... I thought it was so funny and like so touching where it needed to be. It gives me a like Hallmark holiday movie vibe, but it's not about holidays. <laughs> like in right. that she's in New York and she's working her job and everything's fine. And then, you know, this isn't a spoiler, but her, cause it happens like immediately, but her mom passes away and she goes back to Long Island and just starts 
reconnecting with her old friends and like figures out what she wants to do with her life. And it's over like eight episodes and she meets Michael Sarah, who is playing someone who's obviously autistic, but they don't point it out really. He's just very pretty deadpan and very honest and blunt with people. Mm -hmm. And I, I think there are things in the show that are based loosely on Amy Schumer's life. And she is married to uh, a man who is autistic and I think he's a chef. Yeah. Uh, right. So uh, Michael Sarah's not playing a chef, but he is playing someone who like works on a farm or whatever. So she, and she, they really like each other. So she starts spending a lot of time on this farm, like doing work on the farm. It's, it's just really, really funny. And she reconnects with her, her sister, like trying to like rebuild that relationship and they do mushrooms together and that, there's an episode where they do mushrooms that makes me laugh out loud. And there's another one where she goes to the fair and there's like a man in a clown outfit and he's eating a corn dog. <laughs> and she's like, where'd you get that corn dog? And he's like, I brought it from home. <laughs> and I don't know why, but it makes me laugh really hard. <laughs> and she just sees all these people walking around with corn dogs and like no one will tell her like where they got the corn dogs and she's like getting more and more angry it's just so so good like really funny and really thoughtful at the same time it's good it's called life and beth and it's on hulu oh awesome and then i had a tiktok wreck of i think i've already sent this to you but i'm going to mention it to other people because this is a, like one of my go-to accounts that I watch when I want a giggle and it's a comedian uh, and musician and his name is Drennan Davis and he does a bunch of videos with cats <gasps> and basically he he films his cats and he like overdubs these voices and they all talk like this yeah <laughs> <laughs> and they just all have like they all have these funny little personalities and there's four of them and they're all like, yeah, we're into business. And they like wear little neckties and they're talking about their business, but I don't know what their business is, but it's like business. Yeah. And then there's one, <laughs> but one of the cats is named Doug and Doug, he just talks like this. Thanks. Thanks for noticing my bow tie. And anyway, it's just pure. It's just for giggles. Like, just go to it. You'll just laugh. The cats ha all have their little personalities. And, like, sometimes he walks in on them and they're, like, performing little sacrifices with, like, toy mice. Or, like, he did this one recently where he's, like, they have a crush on the babysitter. That's what he says. And they're all, like, Linda's here. Linda, yeah. And, like, Linda, I made you a playlist. And, like, all this, like. Do you like my bow tie, Linda? And like, and then, and then it turns out the babysitter is just there's a possum in the backyard. There's just a possum in the backyard, and all the cats are like, "Linda, look at me!" It's, like, it's really funny. So it's just like at Drennan Davis. So it's like D R E N N O N Davis, all one word on TikTok. It's super funny. Check it out. I love TikTok. Such a I love TikTok I too. Know. That's a good one. Such a time suck for me, but I still super love it. <laughs> <laughs> and I am finally watching Inventing Anna. I'm super behind. Everyone's already watched Inventing Anna and have moved on, but I'm watching it now and I feel stupid that I waited so long to watch it because it's totally my jam. Yeah, you would totally be into that. Like I love I the the swindling like the the aspect of her like swindling people is my jam and then there's this journalism aspect that like the whole all, like all the journalists working together to put the story together is also my thing so i love it and they filmed it like her apartment is on my corner oh when she comes out that. of the subway that's my corner <gasps> i know so every time i see that i'm like holy shit you're all that's my town that's where i live that's my hood that's my home there my homies are there you can see my place <laughs> It, it's it's really great and you know it's a Shonda Rhimes thing so it's super watchable and I'll, I'll finish that one really soon because it's quite addicting yeah and I think yeah that's everything on my list unless we want to talk about the Oscars which I don't think we do <laughs> no we're not going to come up with something I'm going to be like Daniel uh 
the uh, Harry Potter. Who am I thinking of? Daniel Radcliffe. Daniel Radcliffe said, there's absolutely no original opinions anymore. I refuse to d- get d- dive into this. He doesn't want to get dragged by black Twitter. So also, he's just like, nope. <laughs> also, <laughs> but also, who, why are they asking him about stuff? It's like, who cares? Like, lazy journalism. Yeah. It's like, just, yeah. yeah. Somebody asked Jim Carrey about it. And I was like, why are yeah. you asking celebrities about this? They did. It doesn't matter what they think. <laughs> Right. And that's this. all I'm going to say about it. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. I'll, you and I could talk off the air, but I'm yeah. not going to. Yeah. No, nor do we need to. It's like it's it's been talked to death at this point. So but in general, I will say, like, I'm sure we were both quite happy that Coda won. Coda won. I was happy with um, all the acting almost all yeah. that that won. Um, I was super excited for West Side Story. I thought that actress was amazing oh, in she's there. So and good in that movie. So she's good. wonderful. And she and it was a first, you know, queer woman of color yes. that won. We had our first deaf man yes. that won. The uh the Summer of Soul documentary yes. is on Hulu. I watched it again the other night. So good. I was so excited. Quest Love. That is some of the that's one of the best documentaries I've ever seen. It's like the footage they have yes. of this concert in Harlem in nineteen sixty nine. And you have Nina Simone, Sly and the Family Stone. You've got, I mean, just incredible people. Stevie Wonder. It, Stevie Wonder. Um, I loved it with Sly and the Family Stone. Like the band comes out and somebody in the audience, like, who's that white dude? Because it was like a mixed race <laughs> band. They What's he they doing here? And then like the uh, the Fifth Dimension come yes. out. And is it Marilyn McCoo? Like, yes. She was the lead singer. And, like, they didn't know that they were black. She's that, like they were, And she's so beautiful yes. and still is. Yes. She's breathtaking. But I mean, there's so many great stories. And then I read in the paper the other day that there's this whole, I don't know if it's a Reddit thing or what, but there were people who found themselves in the documentary. Oh, because they didn't, there was people who said, like, my parents didn't have cameras. They didn't have video cameras. Yeah. They and so they saw themselves as little kids or teenagers. <gasps> and they saw family members they haven't seen in a long time. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. It was giving me the chills. Yeah, this are, it was just giving me the chills. I'm like, oh, my God. This is, a, it's, seriously, if you haven't seen it, do yourselves a favor. It's so well done. It's, it's one of the things that sucks about the Oscars is that we, we like separate things and like because one of the best movies that came out last year was summer of soul was a documentary summer of soul. Yeah. it's not nominated for best painting it's only for best documentary and we do the same thing with animated movies like now they're right. all in in the animated category and they don't compete for best picture and i'm like this is, it's bullshit like yeah nominate the stuff that's actually the best in the categories that it should be in and because summer soul was one of the best things to come out last year and it should have been nominated for more stuff without question without i just think it was just excellent and so i i love the the winners that we had i thought they were and uh yeah that's all i'll say about it yeah uh, just overall like the show was they they really want to create a show for people that don't care about the oscars and i'm like only the movie people are watching this like create something for movie people stop Uh, stop trying to appeal to everybody like they had a thing where they went on twitter and like what's your favorite movie blah 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 (laughs) so So it was what was it was the flash or something flash breaks the sound barrier or something it's so stupid it It was was so so lame yeah, someone on Twitter said, why don't they just host it? Just give it up and let TCM host it. Yes. Because they'll do it right. Yes. The people who will turn in, you know, just keep it to that level. But, act, you know, nobody wants to give up the the, the broadcast right now, broadcast yeah. networks. I mean, because it still airs around the world and stuff. Yeah, exactly. But... And the truth is when you try to appeal to everybody like you that, appeal to no one. you appeal to no one. Exactly. And right. It's, it's not going to work. It's just, you're going to alienate people like me and you who like super love movies and you're not going to click with like younger people who are like, whatever, like, I don't care. And I just want to watch Justice League when Flesh breaks the speed zone. <laughs> that made me, I was, we were all like you and me and Adam were on a text chain. I'm like, <laughs> this is bizarre. This is just bizarre. Oh, such a fail. It's such a yeah. fail, but anyway. For many reasons. So I mean, for but... many reasons, but that was one of them. I just, I get more and more disappointed in the Oscars every year in the, 
how they how they broadcast it basically like cutting out things like um Riz Ahmed won like an Oscar for a short film and like yeah the, it we you know it's like then they just like show a clip of him getting the award and I was like I love Riz Ahmed please show all of it like why do I right. uh, anyway it doesn't matter it's done yeah. what's done is done What's done is done. I'm going to go watch cat videos on TikTok after this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Margo, where can people find you on the internet? You can find me on social media at Brooklyn Fit Chick on Twitter and Instagram on TikTok. TikTok, excuse me. I'm at Margo Donahue and my site is brooklynfitchick.com. And you can, if you like the sound of our voices, and I assume you do, we also co-host a podcast called What a Creep, where we talk about creeps of the past and the present. And we end every episode with someone who's not a creep. So join us there. If you like this show, we would love for you to give us a review. You can mm -hmm. review us on almost every platform. That would be super dope. And we'd give you a shout out on the show if you do it. And if you have requests for things you'd like us to talk about, we take requests. You can email us at dorkingoutshow at gmail.com. Or you could tweet to us. We're at dorkingoutshow. You could even write it on our Facebook. I'll check our Facebook page. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Do that. And you can find me at thesoniashow.com on Twitter and Instagram and TikTok. I am so glad that we finally talked about Hairspray. It's such a great birthday pick, Marco. Thank you. I'm about to do the mashed potato. Mm, mashed potatoes. Gravy and biscuits. Mm.